Andrew Richards here today, chiropractor from Well Aligned Camray. This is Ryan, and today we're gonna to be looking at glute activation, and we're gonna be using the EMG Biofeedback, which is a dual channel device, to tell us a lot more about what's going on. So we're gonna have a look at Ryan doing a squat. So Ryan, if you can just stick your hands out in front and do a squat for us, and back up. So Ryan's got great squat technique. He sits back into his hips, his knees track well, there's good control there. So you, you might assume that he's actually got quite good glute activation. But what we're gonna to do today now is look at, despite the fact that he's got good squat patterning, where does the activity happen from a muscle point of view? So let's have a look at that. So what we're gonna do is, we've got two channels here. We're gonna stick one channel on his glutes. Pull your shirt up for us. Up there. And that's a reference point. And then the other one's gonna go on his hamstring. Now the thing when we look at glute activation, it's not whether you're just using it or not. There's actually a ratio of activity that's ideal. And when we look at a squat pattern, you should use the glute in a ratio of two to one. Twice as much effort should happen in the glute versus the hamstring. And the hamstring gives us a sort of an indication of what the whole lower leg's doing. So people that have classically had a history of knee problems or low back problems tend to rely a lot more on activity through the lower leg rather than driving out of the, the glute. There wouldn't be too many people that come to me with low back and knee problems and don't find themselves somewhere along the line working on refining their glute activation patterns. So now we've got channel one going to his glute and we've got channel two going to his hamstring. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get Ryan to do another squat. But now we're tracking the activity in his glute and his hamstring. We're looking at what those muscles are doing and when they're doing it. So Ryan, hands out for us again. Just let that cycle through for a sec. There you go. And up. Okay, just one sec, relax. Okay, look straight ahead, down and up. And down and up. And down and up. So what we're getting here with Ryan is we're getting great spikes of activity as he drives out of the floor, but what we're not getting is the, the enough activity that we're looking for on the way down. So on the way down, that's what we call an eccentric contraction, and that's quite common in people. They've got good concentric strength, but they actually don't have the, the eccentric control we're after. And why that's so important is because it's an eccentric control that controls the stress and strain of your foot hitting the ground and absorbing the shock as you go to prepare to step off. So we're strengthening, a lot of people focus on strengthening the concentric phase, but it's the eccentric phase that often leads to the joint injuries that we see in practice. So having this measure then allows us to look really clearly at how we work through that phase of the contraction and improving that. 